Hi, it's Jordan, and I wanted to make a video today about empathy. So one of my clients recently wrote to me saying, Jordan, I'm having massive realizations on the topic of empathy, and it's opening up whole new worlds in terms of my intimate life. And he also said, if I knew about empathy years ago and the power that this thing has, I would, it would have totally changed everything in my life. I wish I knew about this before. So I wanted to share a few of my own thoughts about empathy because I think it is perhaps the world healing capacity that is needed but very much missing in these times. So where should we begin with empathy? I think if you take an average course on the topic of empathy and get some regular guidance, they'll tell you to sit down, listen, um, ask some, some curious, um, non-directed questions and, and listen really carefully to what the other person says and um, try and imagine what it's like to be them and walk a mile in their shoes. That's the classic way of understanding empathy. So we can listen and we can ask questions and we can try and put ourselves into their, their feet and we can do that with them in a conversation or we can do it alone at home later on. Um, but empathy of that kind of variety usually requires a lot of mental backflips. So I don't know what it's like to be you, but if I can hear your story enough, I can try and imagine if I was in your position. Uh, there's a lot of kind of mental cognitive work that can go into a lot of empathy as it is currently taught, uh, even though that, that's a fantastic thing and a, and a needed place to start. And so for me, empathy really is a full-bodied affair. It's a somatic capacity. And what I mean by that is, if I'm being empathetic, what needs to happen for empathy in its purest sense is that I stop the mental gymnastics or I stop asking the, um, the, the, the clever, curious question to try and elicit a little bit more information. And I definitely leave at home the, the trite kind of hashtags of support and um, corporate message type of empathy. Instead, what's called for is, is a full somatic awareness in the moment as you're with the other person. So what empathy looks like when, when I'm in that state is I'm sat with the other person or standing with the other person and I take them in fully so that their felt experience absorbs fully into me and so that I, I feel fully what their experience is. I cannot have the experience that they've actually had and they're actually going through, uh, that would be impossible to actually be them. But the closest I can get in the moment is to listen to them with my full body and hear all of them come into me. And so what tends to happen is if somebody is with me and they're speaking a story or they're telling me something about what happened and they go into grief, um, my response is I feel grief. I feel the pain and the, the, the tension and the suffering uh, in my heart as they do it. And often it will move me to tears as well. So they start crying and if they really get into their, their emotions as they're speaking, I've got no help but to cry some tears of emotion as well. If, if I am a, a mirror, like, and if my body is, is made from these mirror neurons, whatever's happening in their circuitry is, is mirrored exactly onto mine, and I feel that experience with them. I feel them, I feel their experience in real time with them. And we all know a little bit of this. So you've probably got a movie that you've seen in your life that is a tearjerker. At the end, there's a scene, I th I, in, Thinking up this video, I was thinking about the lion where the, the Indian child is, is adopted in Australia but then goes back to India to hunt down his family. It's like, I cannot help but, but cry um, watching that movie. And it's just the, 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 the team that's made that movie has done such a remarkable job at transmitting that emotion through. 
and it just impacts audiences around the world. And, and so that's the empathetic function. Um, so I sit with someone and instead of trying to understand them, I, I suspend my thinking and my mental gymnastics and I just sit in and so sit there with them as present as possible and soak in the moment and feel with them. And uh, that can be incredibly joyous. It can be ecstatic. It's how one person transmits their mood to another person. Um, empathy is a real ride when you're really feeling the human experience as it's given to you by so many other people. So the reason I think this is a world changing thing and, and embodied empathy, the way I'm talking about it here, is, is a healing and a transformative empathy is because when somebody comes to you with their pure pain and their, their really difficult emotions and they speak them and you become so in the moment with them, not trying to mm -hmm, ask the clever question, say the clever re response or stroke the chin and, and try and understand their experience because you're feeling it totally with them. Um, usually what happens is they've got this um, felt invitation to go deeper and express deeper layers. And so they will express deeper layers and you'll feel those deeper layers mirrored in your own body and you'll feel them too. And you will reflect that you're f feeling them back to them, which helps them drop even deeper. And if you sit with someone as they get to the core of their grief or the core of their anger, um, you're completely in it with them too. And once a person drops down, if a person is, has been plagued with sadness all their life, for example, if a person ever gets the opportunity to drop down and feel the absolute pit of their sadness in the company of another person who is feeling their pit of their sadness with them, then once the pit of sadness has been experienced, it miraculously seems to dissipate or alchemize or, or, or just move through finally and something else can come. And so to feel the pit of one's emotions is much easier to do with an empathic listener who is with you in this deep embodied level. And so this is the, the essence of very powerful therapy. It's also the essence of a transformational relationship. So if you can sit with your woman or sit with your man and uh, be with them as they drop to the, the absolute pits of despair or the, the depths of their anger at you or the depths of their sadness that they've suffered, um, and you can feel into the pits with them, then a hell of a lot of stuff can start moving. And thinking about on a cultural level, we've got so much division at the moment in the world on a cultural, develop, on a cultural level, I think some of the most powerful experiences around genuine healing between peoples is to have them come together in this felt somatic empathy not, I understand your story, yeah, I get it, but I'm literally so absorbed in, the, in, in you telling your story and feeling everything with you that I have to, by this inference, digest everything you're telling me. And because I feel everything that you're telling me so intimately, as if it is my own, because it is my own, from the perspective of oneness, because it is also my own, then I can feel that deeply and for you to drop there and me to drop there, well, we, we've, we've come to a very profound place of, of expression and sharing. And then from, from sharing the, de the depths and the pits of, of our trespasses against each other, um, things like authentic remorse can actually come through and not the contrived kind of remorse that you often see. Or the clever person who wants to kind of get your experience a little bit, but hasn't felt the pits of it. Um, so it takes tremendous training and presence and, and, and an ability to feel all of your body to be able to be with this other person in, in such depth. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. That, that's the healing side of things. Empathy is tremendous for healing. If we talk about sex, just to switch topics a little bit, um, empathy, on this 
fully embodied level is where tantric sex starts to actually become good for men. So tantric sex for most men sucks for a long period of time because you've got to um, withhold or, or not have your normal orgasm. And so there's months and months, maybe even years of, oh no, I had an orgasm I didn't want to, or I spent most of the sexual encounter focusing on my breathing and just trying to keep myself under control. There's this kind of no man's land that a lot of us go through in our sex lives before it gets really good again. And so the empathy function in sex is when I stop ejaculating as a man and I'm in this kind of pristine mirror-like empathy with my woman, as we make love, bit by bit, her sensations arise. A vibration in the body, a spiral of energy upwards, a wave, a slight convulsion. And as the man who is inside of her, with that full empathy, I can feel everything that she's feeling real time with her as it happens. Her spiral of energy is reflected as a spiral of energy in me. Her convulsions, her waves, her contractions, her sensations are all mirrored inside of me. And so not only do I know how she's feeling, which enables me to take the ideal next step, like seamlessly I can just do the right next thing that feels good to her and feels good to both of us, but the pleasure for me is all of a sudden I get to feel what it's like to have female orgasms, multiple. And one male orgasm is nothing like what the experience is like to be inside of her for an hour and a half having wave after wave. And rather than be, be, being this detached observer lover who's doing all these magical things to her and then I get to see what a piece of art I make, I'm actually in that piece of art and, and feeling everything that she is at the same time. So sex for men finally becomes fucking amazing in the way that it is such a grand thing for women once, once we can all get to those levels. So what does it take to get to this level of empathy? Well, it requires really having a clean vessel, which means that the vessel of my human instrument, my human feeling system is, is clean and clear. So if I've got a lot of contractions or if I've got a lot of undigested emotions in my life uh, that I haven't felt, then usually I'm quite numb and constricted and I don't have a lot of empathy. That's what we see in the world at large. Most people are detached from their bodies. They're numbed out by internet and just our work habits and, and just the civilization that we've got. They, they don't feel much of their own selves. So how can they actually feel much of the others? They have to do these cognitive gen gymnastics to try and give the feeling of empathy and hope to drop into the state of empathy. But if you clean your, your vessel out, which means to do enough healing and embodiment work on yourself, to start becoming aware of the sensations throughout all of your body as, as a norm, um, then you can start to give birth to a naturally occurring empathy function, deep empathy function. So any kinds of healing, um, ranging any, from anywhere from breath work to a bit of therapy to just feeling your emotions in meditations and becoming more somatically literate, emotionally literate, you can, you can start to clean that out. And, and you'll notice bit by bit, you don't have to try and do empathy. Um, you will just feel yourself touched by other people more instantly, more intuitively and more naturally, and then touched by life. And people that I've known well that have gone on this deep journey of, of deep embodiment, of, of somatic physical healing of, of their bodies and their emotional selves, they go, to, they go to a movie and where they might have been hard and not crying 10 years ago, they're bawling at the most insignificant thing. Or you walk down the street on a sunny day and, it, and, and it's like you, you want to raise your arms to heaven and just say thank you. What a wonderful life that I'm living. And, and these are all responses from having a, a, an online empathy function. So if there are parts of you that you haven't yet worked through and felt, and if there are parts of life that you judge or you're afraid of or you're scared of, well, all those things are going to inhibit you from feeling certain parts of the human experience because you'd be listening to another person. And because you're uncomfortable on the inside, you haven't yet embraced and worked through some of the stuff that they're bringing, 
um, you won't be able to, to have that empathy with them. You won't feel that part of yourself. So when they talk about that part of themselves, you'll be braced and constrictive and um, you won't allow that magical flow of energy between two people to happen. For example, if, if someone is really speaking their anger and expressing their anger, if, if you on the inside are like, oh, I don't like this, I don't want anger, then you are not given a permission for them to express and come through and you won't be feeling with them and you won't enter into any kind of oneness with them. But if someone comes with anger and you've really got a healthy relationship to anger and they express their anger and you're kind of like, fuck yeah, damn, I feel the fire of that in my body. Like, I hear you, I'm with you, this is great, give me more, I love this, what fire. If, if, if you can feel that and revel in it and invite more of them and, and feel that fire up in you as well, the two of you can walk into some transcendent moment of warriorship. This is warriorship between brothers. Like, fuck yeah, you feel angry, I feel it too. Let's fucking go to war. I see you, I honor you. I'm on the same side, two warriors arise. Or in an intimate partnership, your, your woman is extremely angry at you and rather than being scared of anger, you can be like, give it to me, I wanna hear it more. Show it to me fully, show it to me fully then you've got an opportunity to cycle that anger through and, and go somewhere else rather than that anger getting stagnant and turn into these petty little judgments that, that people have when they, the, the passive aggressive, the passive aggression that people have when they're not so healthy in their relationship to their anger. So that's empathy as a somatic skill. Um, and I think the more embodied we become as a, as a human species, the more we're gonna be able to genuinely receive each other and give each other these moments of not just being heard or seen, but being felt on a really visceral level. And to be felt like this, just like both with the, the grief example, the sadness example, the anger example, the sex example, when two people feel each other this deeply and come into a shared emotional resonance, that that's the constituting um, ingredients for the experience of oneness to happen. So if you wanna have these experiences of oneness, of unity with another person, it takes this kind of empathy to, to get there and go there. So empathy on the one side of the spectrum is the, the passive, the receiving, the full bodied reception of another person. And the other skill I wanted to touch on, the other capacity rather, I wanted to touch on in this video is the capacity for transmission. So empathy is I can feel everything that you're saying. Transmission is to speak with a full bodied, the, speak with the full bodied feeling of what you're feeling as you're speaking it and saying it to the point where you can even get your message across to the most hardened and disembodied listener. Well, that's transmission. So a person with a weak ability to transmit their feelings to another is going to just tell their story, but they're not really feeling their body or feeling their emotions as they speak it. And the listener has to be trying really hard with their empathy to actually to get what you're saying. But most people won't be touched or impacted. But from time to time you come across a person or, or someone in your life drops into themselves in such a deep way that all their words are, are charged with the full emotion of what they want to bring across and it just gives this transmissive effect. And again, a great actor in a movie will do this. They will move hundreds of millions of viewers to tears because they manage to enter into the spirit of that feeling and put the feeling through the screen in their words. Um, in relationship, your, your partner might be complaining, 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 and you've got no empathy for the complaint. But all of a sudden, if they drop down to the depths of the concern that really touches them and causes them to complain, and, the, and, and then they speak with the vulnerability, okay, I'm complaining to you because this hurts me and I don't want it anymore and it's hard for me to live with. If, if, if your partner can break their heart open a little bit as they speak to you and then give you the message with that emotional intonation, then often even the hardest, most walled off person can feel touched. 
oh wow, you know, I'm not moved often or I don't cry often, but that speech or that thing that that person shared in the circle the other day or yeah, like uh, whenever that, that particular activist not many activists are touching people because there's so much fire for vengeance, but if an activist touches down into the, 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 the depths of their grief and their pain and then can transmit that through, then that can move mountains as well. So we've got empathy, the, the, the somatic full-bodied empathy to receive others in the world. And then we've got transmission, which is the full, fully felt, fully embodied place from which we can speak and impact the world and this is very exciting as well because not many people are talking about this and if anything is going to shift in in culture it's going to be because leaders can step forward with a transmissive capacity and people who do that are really generally only the the great spiritual leaders people who can move a room with their words, with their emotions and with their spiritual connection all aligned into one message. So I hope this has been uh, a useful perhaps reframe or perspective on, on empathy. I will add actually that um, learning and training empathy which is learning and training your, your body as instrument to be so receptive and fully felt can be a double-edged sword. So to clear oneself out of their, their, their walls and their hardness and their inner tension and to receive so much data and information from the outside world can be super overwhelming. And for me, for sure, um, once I got on the embodied empathy track in my own life, I'd find myself going out to parties and then quickly being overwhelmed by the amount of chaos and just stuff happening in the room that I'd have to make an excuse and leave after half an hour and go back to my room because it was just too much overwhelm of energy in my system. And so at these moments, that, that's when you bec become an empath. <laughs> and, and it's not easy being an empath. So there, there's another skill um, as one learns to become a, a very receptive and, and, and fine-tuned instrument there's another skill to learn at the same time, which is to be able to modulate your empathy, modulate the amount of information that comes in and impacts you and, and be able to keep out the amount of information that, that can come in just to preserve your sanity and make sure that you can still move within this crazy crowded world um, and get your, get your needs met and get your jobs done and not just be overwhelmed by the deluge of human feeling because it's um, unending. It's unending what there is to be felt. So comments, questions, takeaways, uh, additions to the discussion. I'd love to see you pop them down below in the comments and I'll be back soon with another video. So subscribe. Yeah. Thanks a lot.